All right. Uh, the state of mind. Uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe. And, and you know, I just, uh, I kind of just say what comes out of me in the beginning, which is the way I do this. So subscribe because by subscribing, you will see more people like the individual I'm going to interview. <laughs> he is, uh, what can I say? He started out on Guiding Light. And he skyrocketed, man. Like probably no other daytime actor. I know there's been a lot of actors on daytime that have done uh, movies and things like that. But this guy is a great actor, great guy. And his career is un unbelievable coming from daytime. And I, I literally at 30, 25, I would have I cut my right arm to be where he's at. Uh, and he's just, he, he's, he, he was in my fa one of my favorite series of all time. I don't watch TV or movies, especially now I'm getting too old, but he was in kingdom, which is, was made. My whole family watched it. Uh, he's done the Avengers. He's done Captain America. He's done a, a ton of stuff. So enough ass kissing, <laughs> but he deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> And we're going to get deep today. I, I can just feel it in my bones. And, I, and if I start crying, I'm already emotional. That's all right. Men cry, man. Yeah. That's just the way it works. How you doing, Frank? I'm doing great, man. And you're right. First of all, thank you for those kind words. Um, and you're right, men cry. Yeah. Period. Well, you know, <laughs> that's one of my, my things where why I started State of Mind and I knew that I wasn't going to hold anything back. Because I wanted everybody to know that no matter how tough you look or how cool you think you are, I was brought up that crying wasn't, was weak. Right. I'm Spanish, you're Italian. Same thing. And it almost seemed like when I had my first nervous breakdown and I was in a mental hospital, that all that holding back crying, it came out. While I was on the bed there, right, and you just all I did was cry, man. Right, all I did was cry. So what I what I like, and I and I and I just looking you up, and you, you feel the same way. Cry, man, have to cry. What do you think? And cry right? often. You yes, know, I I, I got to tell you, I have a I have my three sons, and my youngest son, I can see it already. He's he's fifteen. He's a little he's gorgeous, but he's a little small, right? He thinks he's small because his friends are all ridiculously tall. <laughs> Beautiful kid, and um, he gets frustrated because he's not big or he's not st as strong. And I could see him, and I go, "What's what?" Do you? He goes, "I just don't want to cry." I go, "Why?" He goes, "I just don't want to." I go, "Cry!" Wow, cry! Just cry. Your body wants to cry. You yeah. want to cry. Yeah, it's for a reason. Yeah, right. Your body tells you you're hungry for a reason, so you'll eat. It tells you to cry so you will purge this emotion. Yes. You'll, and because after we cry, what do we feel? We, f we do feel a little bit better. Yeah. Right? Of course. And so, come, you know, like I remember seeing you how many years ago coming out with what you were dealing with in a time where nobody did. Nobody, no. No one did. No, no. And it's hard to get, you know, it's hard to get footing on on that cause at a time when no men were like i don't want wait, oh wait, yeah he's saying stuff i don't i don't yeah i don't want to talk about that yeah. that's how i feel yeah you know yeah i had a father like that i had a father so something. you were brought up with that way also where you yep. you got to be strong you got to be strong and yet i had a father who suffered from chronic depression no and alcoholism and he died from it you know ultimately but struggled with his emotions and and you know what i thought you know, when I was younger, was a bout of melancholia, but it wasn't. This guy was seriously depressed. And towards the end of his life, he was on, you know, uh, depression meds and, and was doing better, you know. Wow. Uh, but again, came from an Italian immigrant household, a lot of boys. Uh, you had to be tough, you know, growing up in the city. You, you just had to be, you know, in the Bronx. And yeah, yeah. You had to be tough. <laughs> and don't you think that... Now that we're talking about it, because I, 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 I believe this, 
that kind of way of upbringing and stress and not letting it out is going to cause the depression. Oh, my God. And, and exacerbate right? all the bad things yeah. about depression. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And you're so alone. What's, I mean, you, people who, who suffer from depression and are afraid to talk about it, especially, I, specifically men, because my experience has been specifically 99% with men. I know. It's, it's, the results are devastating. And I got to tell you, I've experienced, as I, I've told you earlier, I've experienced this past year, two people who took their own lives who could not cope. And what, they, what did each of them pass away from? They both died from gunshot wounds to the head. Okay? One of them was a vocal, very prominent manager. He came from a very prominent family in Hollywood, Chris Uvain. Uh, his brother's Kevin Uvain, Stephen Uvain. Kevin is one of the partners of CAA. Had all the help in the world, had all the money, had success. He had a great bunch of clients, uh, had a great new wife, talked about Jesus his depression, Christ. was trying Jesus. to find the right meds. Wasn't enough, man. Do you know? It wasn't enough. My, my cousin, who, who I grew up with as a brother, uh, you know, was, was kind of a happy-go-lucky guy. Um, got divorced from his wife. She moved to Montana. He was struggling with going back and forth. Came to my house on a Thursday. We chatted about what he, what I thought he should do, as far as where he should live, and yeah. he wanted my opinion because uh, we were we were always together. We always together. And then he drove home and saw his kids and shot himself in the head with his kids in the house. By the way, so out of character. Now, Chris was one thing because I could say, well, I can kind of understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. struggling. Years. Yeah. Years. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so it was everything to help him, you know? But good. what was good about Chris was he was vocal about his condition and how he could help others with it. My cousin was silent about it. And, just and both depression. So, so, you know, that's kind of kicked me into high gear as far as as I've gotten older now, and I'm encroaching on 60, you know, I'm 57 years old, right? You know, acting's great. It's been a great way to make a living. It's been a great way to create a lifestyle for myself and for my family and to meet great people. But I feel like someone or something up above has put this in my face because I, this is what my next chapter in life should be about, is, is helping people. Well, then, Frank, yeah. I'm here. Yeah. And that's all I've been doing for 30 years. I know you have. And you know you, you know everybody needs, it has to be the right time. And when you reached out to me, and you've reached out to me a couple of times, and um, you know, I've always got my, my head and you know, I'm dancing at 30 weddings at once, as my mother used to say. Uh, <laughs> but when you reached out this time, I was like, it's time for me to go and talk to him because he, he's probably, you probably more than any celebrity, anybody with a platform has been doing this yeah. so long. Especially as a man. Yes. I think Patty Duke was yep. the, the, the main, you know. Right. Um, but when I when I did Oprah, there was no man talking about it. Ever. And now bipolar is the new crazy. I know. I know. You're bipolar. I know. You're crazy. You know. Yeah. Um, I'm here for you if you want to. You know, depression, let me, you know, it's, it's good that we're going to talk depression. I didn't know this was going to start this uh, way. Me either. But I, this is yeah, great. I either. just go where it takes me. Yeah. Um, depression... Because I talk a lot about bipolar and I talk a lot about anxiety. Because anxiety literally almost took me during the pandemic. That's what it was, the anxiety. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. during pandemic. Yeah, I almost. It was. And you know what it is, right? I oh, mean, I knew exactly what I just. Let me tell you something about. Now, I've never, obviously, killed myself, but I've had during. The, 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 I'll t I'll say it again because I say it quite often. It's the. The unbearable amount of pain that you can't go another minute. That's what depression is. Right. And But the anxiety for me is my dad. My dad passed away. Oh, Jesus, hold on. <laughs> I, I got you. I know that pain. Yeah, my dad used to say to me, "What, uh, Mauricio?" And he said it to me like fifty times, man. He said, "Mauricio, what is the difference 
between anxiety and depression. And I'm saying, Dad, you asked me this 30 times already. <laughs> He goes, yeah, I know, I know, I want to know. I said, all right, I'll tell you again. I, it's hard to, they're both really bad. Right. But I believe anxiety's a little worse because depression is heavy for me. Right. Obviously, for some people, it's different. Depression is heavy. You don't want to get out of bed. I say bed is your quicksand. You don't want to eat. You don't want to do anything. Despondent. Yeah and, yeah, and you just can't go on like, but anxiety is like something like Freddy Krueger in your mind. And when I'll say, I, I talk about it so much, I stayed about this last time during a pandemic, Paula was there. And, you know, she always saved me, but I was fucking shaking, dude. And I'm thinking, Oh no, what's I, that's never happened to me. I've had three nervous breakdowns. So the, the, the manifestation into the physical. And I will, and I said, Paula, what the hell is this? And Paula's like, you're going to be all right, honey. Because that's what she always says. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean I'm going to be all right? But I'm shaking. I'd lay down. I'm still shaking like a fish. And I said, and then it was four months of hell. Hell. Four months? Four months where I'm thinking, I don't want to do it with a gun because it's, uh, it's too messy. And I don't want my family to see that. And I don't want to take pills just in case I survive. I'll be the guy who's attempted suicide and survived. Correct. So I, was, I, was, I would do a walk around a, a, my property, and there was a big tree there. And I would be crying, walking around, and I would see this tree, and I would figure out when am I going to put that rope there. And let me ask you a question, yeah. because it, you're an interesting, it's an interesting study because, you know, after these two guys shot themselves in the head. And I like, I, I need to verbalize that often. Yeah. I often would think and, and talk to my brothers and cousins and say, well, what, 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 what was he thinking? Why, what was so bad? What had, nothing had changed. There was no, so I ask you because mm. now you, you're a person who's kind of come yeah. to the precipice of yeah. it. What had changed in the four months that you were feeling so bad, had anything happened or changed to trigger that? Oh, yeah. It did. Well, it was very simple uh, for that one. And then there's depression. Okay. This also, my, because we're very, the, the, it's the thoughts that kill you. That's, you know that. Oh, I can talk to you about, about thoughts and anxiety and the catastrophic, yeah. f That's catastrophic what, future and all those things. One time when I had really bad depression, I had these thoughts also. Uh, it was just because I, I produced a movie. I had people come to see it. 500 people came. And I thought it's, everybody hated me and hated the movie. And maybe half wait, did. Wait, but that's my life. What are you talking about? What's, what's the problem with that? <laughs> the no, but Frank, I know. But it, that, that's, that triggered right. depression. Right. Ridiculous. This, in the pandemic, what triggered it was I was promoting my book, New York Times bestseller. Uh, I just had to put that out there. Yes, you do. Um, and... I was going to tour New York. They said, ain't happening because it's the end of the world. That's what I thought in my head. Right. And my mom and dad moved out of my home. That hurt me. And they were going to shut down GH. I've never stopped working at GH for 30 years. So I'm done. I felt a rush of coldness in my body. And that night is when I started shaking. So it's the, those triggers. It isn't just happen something it's stress of course but then what what our thoughts do oh i, I talk to people our, our thoughts our thoughts can be so poisonous is our thoughts take us to a place that is not yet doesn't yet exist but it could in our minds right right and then we convince ourselves right. that's where we're going right. i'm going to unemployment uh i'm never going to see my parents again i'm not going to work um uh you know whatever else is and 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 that's what you think that's what your reality becomes yeah when in turn that's not really what's happening no right? and it didn't happen did no it? <laughs> no so, so what you've created and and what you've created for yourself is by yourself you it's not real yeah and that's why thoughts can get out of control for people and if you don't have an outlet for you, what you what happens you know i i for me 
I don't know what depression is. I can, can honestly tell you, really? I've been depressed, I guess. Like when my mother dropped dead suddenly when I was making a movie, I, you know, I talked to her in the morning. She was dead at night. My mother was 17 years older than me. She was my, my life. We were best friends. She died suddenly. I had to go home and eulogize my mother. I was, Sony shut the movie down for a few days. I flew back. My father, who was an alcoholic, drank himself to death. Wow. And that, and then he died three weeks later. So in the course of a month, they both died. And that was, I still wasn't, dep- I was sad. Yeah. But I was like, I got to keep going. What am I going to do? I got to go. Right. right. I can't, you know. And then my wife filed for divorce. <clears throat> Again, I was like, all right. I was like Job in the Bible. If you know the story of Job. Right. And God took everything. Yeah. She wanted to see if you had any faith. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right. Yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna dig in here, right? And I'm gonna muscle through this. And I would have days of feeling down. Yeah, but always in the gym, always two hours in the gym, sweating, moving around. Always had circulation in my body because I really feel like there's a connection, and always saw the brighter side of it. Right. Wow. Whereas my father, who was chronically depressed, I'm. Su- I'm surprised he lasted as long as he did. And my mother dying, he just couldn't handle it anymore. That was it. He was done. Um, but but I, I never had that. So so I struggle sometimes with really understanding. And I'm so, I'm obsessed with understanding now the grips of depression. And how someone can feel so bad and despondent that they just simply don't want to live anymore. Yeah, uh, it's that That's is. If it, we're not talking about this on the daily, especially again, oh well, yeah, because I know because I am one, especially men, yeah, who unlike women don't have the kind of community or outlets to ex, you know, yeah. uh, nowadays if specifically if you're a white man, nobody wants to hear your problems, <laughs> right, right, right. You're a successful, wealthy, affluent, right, celebrity, yes. You shouldn't have any problems. Right. No. Wrong. <laughs> right. Right. Wrong. Exactly. Wrong. Do you know what I mean? But why can't we have it like an AA and we have people who we get together and we all get in there and, and just like AA and, right. and talk about mental health. Right. I've already talked to somebody about that. We could do that, though. I, 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 listen, and I think, I think you'd fill the place up in 12 minutes. I mean, there are... I, and, and you're right. The pandemic did do something. It did change the consciousness of, I think, globally. And yeah, I start, you know, I, I talk to people now freely about everything that I'm feeling or... or Good for if, you. If, if, you know, I talk about my, my cousin, you know, decided to leave this planet, I talk about it. I, get, I, I just did a press conference for this movie I did. I talked a lot about this. Yeah. And, and how important yeah. this is. And uh, I'm getting more feedback, not from movies, or, but I'm getting feedback from talking uh, with you, with people like you yeah. who are in this yeah. you know, thing. And, and it's, it's just kind of turned on a light bulb. And it's, it's like, well, this, this is for a reason. And, and this reason has become my reason to kind of and talk. I, I think it's, it's very important what you're saying. And this state of mind audience, um, you'll see the kind of response you're going to get out of this. It's, it's un freaking real. I mean, people who write me, who their son wouldn't get help and they were right. going to kill themselves. And now, and now they know they're bipolar and they know that they're not alone because they're watching us talk and it makes it normal. Yep. And you talk about suicide. I talk about suicide. What I want to say it, it, as far as suicide and whatnot um, is what keeps you, I think God, and I've been talking about God quite a lot. I was scared to talk about God early on. Right. And I don't, we don't have to get into it. Right. But now I am. God, see, for me in all these things, in the worst possible times that I've been in, it's like God and the devil fighting each other. And most of the time, God wins. Right. But there's sometimes that the devil wins. And that's when you kill yourself. Right. But just this past in t- two years, look what I've done in two years. And I wouldn't have done it, obviously, if I... So you, you, you have to... It will pass. Right. And there's a light at the end of that... 
right. fucking tunnel. That's 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 listen, right. Because you don't want to leave right. things on. It's so difficult. It's so. I know I want to talk about that, but we always have to let people know that you get through it. You get through. You it. get through it, and you take that right road. Yeah. Don't take the wrong road. Some people get through it, and they like if they're drinking and they go back to drinking. It's gonna get worse for you, brother. Right. But if you take the right road, God will give you gifts, and He rewards you for taking the right road and going through that punishment or suffering however you want to call it right that's what it is you're and you're and you're right you're right about it will pass i'm going to tell you something it i always I recently got sent um a couple of a couple of uh paragraphs of a book that is about people who survived suicide attempts oh and every one of these people go on to say, thank God that it, it didn't it didn't work. I didn't do it. Because it passed. That's right. It passed. That's right. Right? It was a moment yes. of, I'm going to do this now or I'm never going to do it. Right. right. And I know for a fact, my cousin, who was, I, I know this guy as well as anybody in the world. And this guy, if somebody had walked in the bathroom and saw him and he put the gun down, it would have been okay. That's or right. if I would have not let him leave my house that day, because he was, he was debating on whether he should go back to Montana. I said, go see your kids. Go see, you need to see your kids. You haven't seen them in a couple of weeks. He called me once or twice on the way there, and he said, maybe I should turn around. I go, Roy, go see your kids, and let's make a plan so you not come in here sleeping on my couch. Like, you're going to come back, and, you know, you're, you, you. And I say, well, I, I know this guy. If, if, if the moment would have passed, he'd still be here. Yes, but also, Frank, you have to understand, and I say this, I've said it, but it, and then I thought I would get in trouble for saying it. If you want to die, you will die. Of course. And no one should feel guilty because we're all going to try to do what they can to not have that person kill themselves. Right. But there's only so much we could do. Right. Every freaking morning I could have done it. Exactly. <laughs> so, and you thought about it. Oh, every... Not just morning, morning, day, and night. <laughs> right, I mean, so, but there was something in you that was like, yeah, that, I'm going to think about it, but I'm not doing this. You know what the, you know what the, is, you know what happened to me is, I would, I have goats. I have Buddy the Goat, he's an inst Instagram star. And I have alpacas and stuff. And I go, I, I'd go out to, with them, they give me peace and, and it's amazing, right? Right. Well, during this period, I went out one time and, I couldn't get any joy at all. Right, nothing. Right. So I said, okay, I'm gonna, this is it. And I opened the door. And I thought about my family. Right. But at that point, I, I thought that I was a burden to them. So that makes it worse. Because when you think about family, you think you don't want to leave them. Then you probably won't. But if you think you're a burden, you're getting close. And then I... I prayed to God, and I said, if I do this, then the people who follow me on State of Mind will think it's all right to do it. Right. And I, and I changed. I mean, that's an interesting, what an interesting revelation that this this thing that's caused you to create this thing oh, is know, the thing bro. that's saving you from Jesus. doing this thing. I mean, when you think about it, wow. it is, it's, it's, it's biblical. It's, yeah. You know? And acting too. The, the thing that has made me the actor I am has made my life a mother. Right. Because it's tough. Right. I get into the, you be a method actor yeah. and go yeah. in there and, and my character's bipolar. Right. And so I, I got to tell you, when I did the show Kingdom, and we did that for th four years, you know, my character was also, you know, mentally challenged. I mean, he's bipolar and he was an alcoholic and, you know, I went deep, you know, deep. You always point, go deep. Yeah, but I'm deep to the point where I was, I would, I would, I was, I wanted to feel the effects of alcohol a lot because it was, it was important to me. And, and so I would be drinking more wine than I should and go to work with that shitty feeling and, and, uh. This was the time when I, 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 became, I became somebody else. And when my wife was living in New York and I was shooting the show in L.A. and 
she came to see me, which she didn't do enough. Um, um, and she said, you, what, what are you doing? I'm like, what? What am I doing? And I was aggressive. Yeah. What do you mean, what am I doing? I'm working. This is what I do. I got to do this. Like, this is this important to me. And she goes, Frank, yeah, we're all actors. I get it. She goes, but what are you doing to yourself? You're a different person. Yeah. Yeah. So you're right. It's oh, yeah. like, you know, that's another thing. You know, where, 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 the, where the mind goes, the body follows. So if we're all day thinking we're this character and this thing, Absolutely. your body is going to just react the same way. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Frank, you have to understand something because, like I tell people, if you're born without mental illness, you should be kissing the ground. Right. <laughs> right. Because for the last two years, I felt as good as I've ever felt my whole life. Do you know that I've had something ugly inside of me my whole life? But I just thought, that's who I am. Right. And it, now I'm, I'm bipolar, so that's what that is. No, it's gone. Isn't that beautiful? And you seem to, you seem to have that kind of way about, do you care what people think? No. God darn it. Never. That's the key, bro. Never. That's the key. I never did, ever. Not even young? <laughs> never. Brother, I just did this uh, movie, Lamborghini, and I did an Italian accent. Right, Lamborghini. I did an Italian accent, right? It's a big movie. Everybody's got Oscars on the movie except for me, but I had to do an accent. I'm Italian. I grew up with Italian people. I know how to do an Italian accent. They tore me apart, right? They, they, they dumb critic. I'm like, I don't care what you say about my accent. It's like, you know, I don't, I don't give a shit with you. I'm not wow. doing it for them, but the audience loved the movie. Right, so the people, the, the people who are making the movie yeah. for like it, I don't care about the critics. Wow, I, I don't care. I I don't care. <laughs> I never did. My mother used to get a kick out of me because I never let I let things roll off my back. I don't let stuff from people, especially from people I don't know. I don't care what you. It's none of my business what you think about me. My God. And so, and I don't say that from a place of hubris. It's because I got a lot of other problems. I just n never cared. <laughs> that is, you know, because you know Eckhart Tolle, yeah. the power of now. Oh, I've, I've read all his books. Right, so yeah. have I. Yeah. If you're born like you are, wow. Because that, I think, now I'm starting to figure something out about mental illness and bipolar and anxiety and depression. I would, I'm going to look it up. I would say that the percentage of people that are mentally ill care about what people think. Because that's what makes the thoughts right. Do you right. know when I when I'm in anxiety or whatever, I can't even put anything on Instagram because I'm scared. That's how terrible it is. It's so interesting because you're for me looking from the outside in at who you are. I would never think that was you. Yeah, you're like like you are General Hot. Like right. you're the guy. Like it was your show. It's like you're the guy. You're the you're the gangster. You're the yeah. badass man. Like isn't that interesting? And so then you're like, well, I gotta be the badass. Like I can't, you know. I gotta, it, it, yeah. it seems one way. Yeah. But I've only stopped caring what people think. I'm at about 85, 90 percent now, and that's why I feel so great. Feel good. But uh -huh. you were born that way. <laughs> Listen, I. <laughs> what I the yeah I know I giggled I used to gig I never ever cared I just never and my I gotta brother. tell you something I try to instill this in my kids especially my young one because I could see him struggling you know I'm like if, if you care if you care so much what all these people think about you you're never gonna get to know who you are you're never because you're gonna try to manipulate uh. yourself to make somebody else happy or somebody else like you I said that's not you that's amazing you have to like you I said look we're not six footers in this family. I'm 5'10". Right. You're probably going to be 5'10". <laughs> Live with it. It's okay. Right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I said, you love Tobey Maguire? You love uh, Tom Holland? They're like 5'6". They're geniuses. They're, they're brilliant. They're yeah. rich. They're Al Pacino. successful. Al Pacino. Yeah. Who's a, I, I got to be friends with Al Pacino. I'm like, yeah. wow, he is little. <laughs> but he Al Pacino seems like he, he's worried about what people think or oh, not. He, he, yeah, he's an he's a, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he's Al Pacino. But he's right? Al Pacino. He's Al Pacino. Right? Al Pacino. But, That's, but, but what I'm trying to say is there's a correlation between people who, and I think I'm going to really get into that. Because I, you're, I think you're right. I mean, I think there's something to mental illness and that. Right, right. My son, can't, he don't care not, and and that's Paula doesn't either. My wife, she's my like my oldest son is the same way. He's like, 
carefree. It's like, I don't, you know. And there's no mental illness. Here we go. There's three people in this house right. that don't care what people think. Right. And, and there's no mental yeah. illness. Yeah. Oh, oh. I we, know. I, I know. I know. You know, it's interesting, too, because I have my middle child, Liam, who's 18. Since he was 18 months old, he was diagnosed. He's on the spectrum. But he is ADHD. Yeah. And uh, cognitively, he's fine. But he has some language processing things. And so it's, it's in that kind of garbage pail term, the spectrum, right? Yeah. And I often say, I look at him and I often say he's got happy dementia. Like he just, it doesn't register. None of the nonsense, which is nonsense, yeah. that we all seem to care about registers with this kid. Wow. And, I, and he's got such a beautiful, wow. angelic disposition. And I'm like, he doesn't care. So I think your me, aunt, I, yeah. this is a big deal. Yeah. Because I can just tell you from myself what has happened to me in the last two years. And a lot has, I'd say 90% of it is that I don't, I've worked really hard at not caring what people think. I change thoughts. Which if, you can do. You can do. It's, it's like any other exercise. And it takes a week, three weeks, five weeks yeah. to create that habit. You can do right? that. Right? But you can do that. Yeah. You can do it yeah. with all your thoughts. Yeah, I, I I couldn't go to a supermarket without not wanting to. Talk. I'm talking to everybody now. I'm like my dad. And don't when you yeah. Well, and but when you start to do that, I do it too. I talk yeah. to everybody. Yeah, I take yeah, a picture you, with everybody right. all day long. Right. Yeah. I get such great satisfaction out of sharing that energy when people know, come up and I see know. you, and it's ninety nine point nine percent of the time it's very positive and. Right. and and so instead of kind of shying away from it, 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 it feeds know. you. And, and it's a good feeling. But for 58 years, I didn't do it. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I didn't do it. Yeah. But speaking of Eckhart Tolle, it doesn't matter 58 years. Right. Now. That's it. Is what matters. Power now, right. Not tomorrow, not yesterday. Holy it is now. Shit. It is now. You know, there's another great guy. I used to, he's passed uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer. And he, he had a very interesting quote that always stuck with me. He's a brilliant guy. If you change the way you see the world, the world you see will change. And when you think about it, it's a simple sentence, but you have to change the way you look at things. Yeah. And that's what you're talking about. You simply change the way you see things. Yeah. And then everything you see <laughs> changes. Yeah. And it works. I yeah. mean, it sounds a little hokey and a little no. you know, schmaltzy, but it works. No. You know. And you can do it. You can do it. People may think that you can't change your thoughts. You do, you don't have to change your thoughts, but <laughs> no. Sometimes I I do. <laughs> let me sure be the. Let me just let me be a even greater actor. No, I know. <laughs> let me you know. And, I, and and you and this dude right here is a bad dude. I'm telling you. Let's talk about some physical shit. Oh, I you know that's my life. I mean, since I was a boy, five years old, six years old, wrestling and 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 uh, martial arts. I'm a martial artist. I've been boxing since I'm 11 years old, and I love fighting. I just love, I love the, what it mentally what it yeah. takes. I love you know how the physicality. It's it's changed my acting career because once. I started to work in films that that required me to be physical is when people started to pay attention. Yeah. It just came naturally. It was it's like a dance, you know, yeah. it's like being a dancer and you're doing a movie, all of a sudden you're Fred Astaire. And so everybody yeah. wants you to do this thing, right? Um and I have to tell you, I think a lot of the reason why I do keep myself in a in a pretty solid like, mental health state is because I I work out. I train. That's I have. Very a, true. I, I really do. Yeah. My body is always in tuned, right? Yeah. I'm never lacking. Yeah. And if I do have a down day, I stay at the gym a little bit longer. And and the great thing about things like boxing, you know, repetitive motion uh, creates a Zen state. That's why you see these Buddhists doing the 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 stone raking, and it's constant yeah, yeah. repetitive yeah. motion. And you see the. And it puts you in, it, it, you stop thinking. Yeah. So when you have to concentrate on what you're doing, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, all of a sudden, there's no more thoughts in your head. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. You're yeah. only thinking about one, you're two, only three. You're thinking about, and yeah. So now for two hours, I'm not, boxing too. I'm not thinking. Yeah. 
right? Yeah. I'm, I'm reacting, I'm boxing, yeah. I'm, I'm not thinking about anything. I, I stop working out and I'm reinvigorated emotionally. Right. I, because all of that has gone away. Yeah. And what we tend to realize is everything we were thinking about. Unless, look, I have, a, I, have, I have a son who for a long time, I didn't know which way he was going. You're only as happy as your least happy child. So right. that's a real thing to be worried about. Yeah. I don't know where my son's future is going yeah. to be. So yeah. you're concerned about that, yeah. right? Most other stuff. Have you ever been homeless? No. Has your kid ever not had a meal? No. Because you couldn't. No. Do, do you know what I mean? I get it's it. Like, I get it. It's, it's, Look, yeah. it's not good. Right. Why would it happen now? Yeah. Um, so so I, what I'm trying to profess, and I'm not, obviously I'm not an expert or a doctor. I just know what works for me and what works for other people that I've recommended it to is if you're not feeling good, and I'm not talking about people who are laying down under medication. I, I'm, you know, if you're not feeling good and if you're feeling like the day isn't sunny enough, get your body. It could be a walk. I agree with you. Get your I body agree. moving. Yeah. Your yeah. body is very important. <laughs> yes. And it will help this. Absolutely. And I know it because I've done it. Not and I've, I've seen you in, in the ring, and, and there's no doubt that you can kick Captain America's ass. In a minute. In a minute, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. Did he kick your ass in the movie? How did uh, the... We had a good fight. He won at the end because he's... Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a famous scene. There's a famous... Of all the Marvel movies, Cap Captain America 2, there's this famous six-minute elevator scene, an elevator fight with me and him. Oh, I heard about yeah, it. And yeah, and so that's like this epic thing. And I, I told him in the beginning, I'm friends with Chris, and I said, I'm going to hit you. So you better pick your hands up. Wow. And he's like, and he does interviews. He'll still say it. He'll say, what, what's with Grillo, man? Like, what? <laughs> he that's pull. amazing. I'm like, I'm not pulling the punches, man. These were, I'm going to hit you. And he was, we were black and blue at the end of it. And it was, you know. You love that stuff? I love it. I, See, I hate that stuff. I love I'd it. rather a, a, do monologues. No, I do that too. But every, I do some movies where I do, I did a movie called Boss Level, which I produced with my partner, Joe Carnahan. And basically it's Groundhog Day meets Die Hard. I, this movie, Bam. we only had like 30 days to shoot it. I did so many fight scenes, sword fighting, all kinds of physical stuff. I killed Mel Gibson. It was great. And I, 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 I was never happier on a movie. I was never happier. Damn. And I'm old, man. I mean, you know, it's... But I see these 25-year-old kids, they can't keep up. <laughs> <laughs> they complain. Now, what about when you did Grey in the Snow? Come oh on, tell me, you did, tell, me let me you, let me tell you. You didn't that. like that, Frank. Please tell me you didn't like so that. So we were in Smithers, British Columbia, which is way up there in Canada, in the winter... Okay. Come on, man. It was 35 degrees below zero. At oh, least. come every on. Every day. Every day. And we had to go on the top of a mountain. So we only had six hours of daylight. And we had to go up in snow cats. It was me, Liam Neeson, and a bunch of great dudes. And uh, it was so cold that we had to have seven layers. So remember when you were a kid and your mother would dress you up for winter? <laughs> like this. So we, it was no acting required. Like we were so, it was like, just, I mean, what to say? And it was like... It was it was, now, it was beautiful, crazy, and I never want to do it again. Okay, that's what I was going to ask Ever. you. If, if th that movie came along, Grey 3 or whatever, Grey whatever, would you do it now? No. not no. If it was in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> but, but then you were young. Oh, I wasn't it was young. Big, it was just Liam Neeson. Was, I was a big Liam Neeson fan. Right. I had just done a movie called Warrior. which I love thing, Warrior. Right? And so Joe Carnahan who I knew saw Warrior goes, bro, you got to be in this movie. Like, it's going to be epic. We got to go do this. Yeah. And so I was like, let's go, you know. And, and Who was uh, in that? Me and Liam Neeson and Dermot Mulrooney. You know Dermot? Oh, yeah, yeah. Dermot Mulrooney. I thought that you were talking about the other war. There's a movie. Oh, Warriors. Me and Tom Hardy and yeah. Joel Edgerton and Nolte got nominated for an Oscar. Yeah, you, that, yeah, that was a great film. That was a great film, too, yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, I would not do the gray again. I don't listen. I don't like working nights now. I'm spoiled. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean I gotta work at night? But you don't mind physical stuff. That's all I do. I love it. Like doing Lamborghini was a departure for me because it was just a now Lamborghini. Let's get into that because I'll, I'll, I'll I'm gonna promote it and stuff. Um, how was it? Because I played obviously not in a big movie, but I played John Gotti and I right. played uh, Desi Arnaz. You know, I'm, I'm a John Gotti, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you don't fuck with your grandfather. You know? uh, 
But how 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 did you like playing somebody that was famous? I, I you know I loved it. The problem was I only had Banderas was doing it, and he and he dropped out, and they had ten days, and they came to me, and I had ten days. From no, the, from the time they called me to the time I was in Italy shooting, it was ten days. So I read the book that the, the movie was based on, God. that the son uh, wrote, and I got as much information as I could without kind of trying. To, to really be Lamborghini, I said, you know, I'm going to have to kind of make this up. I'm going to have to use yeah. my imagination. Yeah. yeah, I spoke to his son uh, with a translator because he didn't speak English. Spoke to Bobby Moresco, the director, a lot. And uh, and then just had, had a good time with it. I had all the clothes. You know, I got into character. Yeah. And I played a couple of different people that I grew up with. My relatives, my Italian, yeah. my really cool Italian relatives. And... Uh, and I had a ball. I mean, I had a great time. I had an accent coach, and I kind of did all that stuff. And uh, it was it was a I loved doing it because it was a challenge for me, and I was a little afraid. Yeah. And so being afraid is good. You know, yeah. a lot of these movies I go do, I could do falling off a log. Really? They want me to be this guy. They yeah, want yeah, me to I be. Get... They want me to be Charlie Bronson. They I want get me you. To be, I love Charlie. Bronson. Right. Me yeah. too. I I got a movie coming out where I swear to God I just emulate Charles Bronson, and and they want me to be Kurt Russell and you know that yeah. like that yeah. you know and they want you to be that guy. Yeah. So I'm that guy. It's good. I could do that. Easily. But Lamborghini was it was dude. fantastic. I yeah, that's it. a little that's yeah, a little hard. That's hard. You know when I did Gotti, it was the worst one of the worst experiences of my life. It was a it was a TV thing and they gave me a day notice and. The, the, you a, know, day, a day to go shoot the shoot. Yeah, I left on a, on a, I think I left on a Monday and I had to shoot Tuesday. It was just ridiculous. And there's nothing of John Gotti anywhere because John Gotti doesn't do anything. So there was only one little piece of thing where it's with Victoria and uh, Victoria's son and Gotti's in jail and he's like, I'm your grandfather, you know what I mean? You respect me. And that's all I had. So, are you kidding? Yes, you, you, well, you're. That's a ballsy move to take. Uh, it was a ballsy move, but at that, I don't want to really act anymore, to be honest with you. But at that time, I was still right, uh, right, right, uh, right, right, right. And so, I get there, and it's not working, bro. It's not working, and the producer hated me, seriously. And then, so thank God, Victoria and I became friends, and she said to me in in the trailer, I said, "What's?" She goes, "What's the problem?" I said, "They want, they want me to be bigger." And, uh, and she goes, listen, this is great. My dad did not like The Sopranos. Wow. You, you play it like Michael Corleone in The Godfather. There you go. And that... There you go. By the way, that's great advice. It's great. That was, was great, great advice. Yeah. And that's kind of how I played this guy. Like, you know, I heard all the stories about him. And he was a brilliant guy. He was an industrialist. And, and uh, Mira Sorvino played my wife. Yeah. And uh, Gabe, Gabriel Byrne played Ferrari because that's how the whole the whole thing with yeah. Lamborghini was. He was rich yeah. because he started a tractor company. And midlife, he had all these Ferraris and he wanted to work with Ferrari because he wanted to make them better. And Ferrari said, go away, you're a tractor maker. And he went and started Lamborghini, the car company. Now, is Lamborghini the high class car? Or what's the, like I had a Maserati, dude. Maserati's great. But I it think, sucked, dude. Yeah, it, Maserati's were terrible. Uh, uh, <laughs> they were terrible cars. And so were Lamborghinis. Like, they were beautiful. Uh, they were uh, beautiful. Well, so is Maserati. Uh, yeah, but they're, uh, all Italian cars are just so gorgeous. But Ferrari is, uh, you can't, you can't kind of. You can't Aston Martin? Fantastic car. Yeah. Really classy car. And, and, and uh, now well made. A lot of those cars just didn't. I drove the old Ferraris when I was in Rome. How was it? They're terrible. It, like wow. it's hard to drive them, you know. But really? they're gorgeous. They were. They were good. The Mura, which was the, the car in the in the film, which I'm on the poster with, is a, a 1970 uh, Lamborghini Mura. It's in the it's in the Museum of Modern Art today as the most beautiful car ever made. So he was obsessed with really with beauty, and he did great things with the engines and stuff. They just didn't they didn't work well for a long period of time. Well, my Maserati. I knew I was in bad shape when I pulled up, beautiful car, and uh, Patrick Dempsey comes up and he goes, hey, beautiful car, man. I said, yeah. He goes, what year? I, I just bought it. He goes, oh. <laughs> and that guy knows cars. <laughs> he, I said, what do you mean, oh, Patrick? He goes, I just heard the, 
the engine's not that good. Right. And for f four or five years, that car it just didn't drove work. me crazy. I know. I know. All right, brother. Listen, I'm not going to keep. We've been. Oh, I want to talk to you. Uh, one more thing about food. Yeah. I don't eat it. I know. And bulletproof coffee is what I've been doing forever. Oh, yeah. Right. In the morning. In the morning. I just noticed that I was going to do a scene with this guy at my work, and he was a new guy, I didn't know, and, and I thought I was going to kick his ass, and and then I went and ate, and ate, because I don't eat a lot either. I ate a lot, and it messed me up. Oh, yeah. And he kicked my ass, kind of. And I was really? like, yeah. Because I was in my, and I, I said, this has, to, has something to do with food. Yeah. Oh, dude, what? I, well, Tell that, me, that's talk a whole to the show. So yeah, but I love so it. I, I train empty. Like I, 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 uh, I tend to eat one meal a day, uh, and it tends to be the same kind of food. I mean, if you're a person who food has become such a a, a thing in your life that it's a crutch when you're emotionally challenged, when you're bored. You know, if you just, you know, which most people do, they just, yeah. eat, you're, you're overwhelming your body. People, we don't realize, like, especially in the West, especially where we, in this country, we overwhelm our bodies with food and calories. A lot of it's not good. A lot of it's processed. Yeah. Even if it says organic, a lot of times it's processed. All it's doing is slowing your body down. It's slowing your body down. And, and what you're saying makes perfect sense. I... I never train with anything in my stomach. And uh, there is so much in your body stored in your brown fat cells, in, in your fat. You don't need to eat anything. Like people think I need to eat oatmeal to go work out. I'm like, that oatmeal is not getting into your blood. It's not getting into your muscles. It's getting in the way. Wow. So now all the blood that you want in your muscles is going to your stomach to help digest this food. You don't want that. And it's the same thing. So you ate a bunch of food. Now the blood... I work, when I work, and you know, wherever I am in the world, I, you make these movies in crazy places, I don't eat. But I, don't you get upset that I, you're hungry? I'm not hungry. It, it passes, right? Hunger is a mechanism that a lot of the times, is it hunger? Is it boredom? Am I mad at my wife? And so right. I think I need to eat something? Like, right, I get you. you, you, gotta, you gotta, but the clarity you get when your body is not stuffed with food is amazing. It's almost euphoric. I'll get to a place, it'll be 20 hours, I haven't eaten anything. And I'll get to a place where I feel so good. I feel so strong. And you just got to get past what you're normally used to, which yeah. is what you think a hunger pain is. I know. Right? And so, I, you know, kids too, it's like, I see kids that are overweight, and I see, like, every time they get a ping, they think they got to put something in their mouth. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. It'll go away. It's going to go away. Drink a glass of water. It's going to go away. Yeah. You will operate so much better yeah. if, A, you're eating the right food. Yeah, I and, get, that's and true. And, B, you're just not eating a lot of it, you know? That's kind of what I do, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're in great shape, too, Yeah. so. Okay, brother. Listen, I'm going to end this on, oh, uh, my son would have killed me. <laughs> oh, my Joshua would have killed me. Um... First of all, my Joshua came in the other day and he's like, hey, Frank's almost your age and he looks like he's 20. And I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> I said, I'm in good shape. You're in great shape. Yeah, How old yeah. are you? I'll be 60. Yeah, yeah we're yeah, the same yeah. age. So, and then he goes, ask him about, why doesn't he fight Jake Paul? <laughs> Jake Paul is 25 I know. Old. Yeah, I mean, but you, but you, but you know, you yeah, could he could fight Jake Paul. Actually, at this point, he's he's looking pretty. But good. you could, no. Yeah, I mean, I'm always getting offered to do, you know, I'd love to see that. I, I, yeah, I know, but I'm like, is he too big? He's a big kid. I just saw him in Puerto Rico. He's a big kid. I, he's not a great boxer. Like I could outbox him. Yeah, I think. But he's a big, strong, 26 year old kid. I mean, you I know, get you. I'm 57 yeah. years old. Yeah, You know, I'm strong. I mean, I do strength conditioning at five days a week with Justin Fortune, who trains Pacquiao. And we're, I'm strong. All his fighters come, and I train with them. And I'm stronger than them. Yeah. I'm still stronger than them. Yeah. But there's something about, you know. But if he offered you. Jake? Uh, yeah, I like. 
like a, a hell of a lot of money would you get in there? Well, I'll tell you something. It'd have to be a hell of a lot of money because <laughs> they pay me a hell of a lot of money to do these movies, right? Right, right. So if it was a hell of hell a lot, lot of money, money, it would be fun, but it would have to be a hell of a lot of yeah. money. Yeah. <laughs> and you wouldn't care because you don't care what people I think. Don't, losing's part of, of playing. <laughs> I don't... And especially fighting, I often say, like, I'll watch sparring, people get out, and they don't, they don't really know what to do. And they get at this point, they go, hey, you got in there. Most people wouldn't get in there. That's true. That's all that matters. That's true, like, yeah. I've heard there. that a lot. Did you learn something? Right. Yeah. Well, right. there you go. Right. You're good. Move on. Yeah. Um, uh, the Riker brothers say hi. Oh, I love them. I've known them for 35 years. I shot with them yesterday. You did? And they're, they're brilliant. They're coming in here to do State of Mind. Oh, that's great. They're so brilliant. They, they are such beautiful Human beings. They are, man. I've known them so long. They were, first of all, when I first met them, I went, you two, get away from me. You're the best looking guys I've ever I seen. I know. And there's two of you. There's two. <laughs> yeah, and they're great photographers. Oh, my God. I've shot with them many times. That's what they yeah. said. They're, they're could... beautiful people. Yeah. All right, listen. Uh, st- this has been... Uh, I'll end this. This has been... Uh, I, I don't know. I, I kind of thought we would have this conversation... Um, but it was that and about four times better with Frank. With, with about this? Just, uh, just this whole state of mind. Yeah. I knew we would have a good, uh, you even said it, we're going to go deep, but it was, we covered so much, oh, bro. Oh, good, good. Okay. And, yeah. and it's going to help so many people. I'm it, just telling you. You know, I can't tell you, I can imagine what you get, but for me, as I started this journey, I get so many DMs and people reaching out to me. I mean, from The Rock. Yes. Saying, brother, I heard Jay Glazier's interview with you. Thank you for coming. You know, like people who are prominent dudes, mostly dudes, um, and people who DM me who are strangers who say, man, I was feeling really bad today. That's right. I took your advice and I went out and I took, I haven't, I haven't taken a run in a long time and it really helped me. Thank you. And I, if I see him, I answer them. I'm like, brother, and you, and you know why you're getting these? Because they need it. Right. Right. And it's just the way it is. They, there's so many people out there that need what we just did. Right. They need it. Trust me, I badly. Know. I know. And, and there's so much nonsense that we hear all day, whether it's about this party and that party. Oh, I know. Who's this one? You can't say this. You shouldn't have said that. That. Yeah. that guy did this 20 years ago. And yeah. we, filled our, we have filled our minds with such nonsense, man. Yeah, like we've we've you know we've lost our eye on on, I agree. on the ball a bit. So. I agree. Well, we got we got on the ball today, man. Thank you, thank uh, you for for having me and uh, and letting me you know blab and no, yeah, because it was important blab. Yeah, good brother. All right, thank you. <laughs> State of mind. Adios. <clears throat> Thanks, man. Oh, my pleasure.